P to the L to the U to the G, selling loud on the streets since that boy was 14. The cops trying to stop him, but he's loyal to his people, so we keep slinging loud even though that shit's illegal. Yo, welcome back to Real Talk. Um, we're doing a more podcast format this time. I'm trying to experiment with this shit, because uh, <laughs> why not? So um, it's me, some guy. No no rave, we're with uh, Andreas this time. Hello, yes, I'm on Andreas. Uh... <laughs> Also, <laughs> <laughs> it's Andreas. No way. <laughs> well, I think this is the longest I've talked and like in without video. interruption in a video ever. Yeah. Uh, to to any to any of our listening viewers, you might know me uh, as Bad Mike Man uh, oh, in the Scriblio video, um, the <laughs> Wikipedia guy. Um, oh, from Blaze, yeah. Uh, and the uh tertiarily involved with the real talk uh, um, were you uh, in the dokapon stream at uh-huh. i don't know if i was i don't doubt that i might have like pop but <laughs> you don't even you don't have the discord locked you don't do anything to keep someone from just popping in mid recording so it's very possible i might have just popped in i was like hey guys and then you guys went shut up andreas that probably happened <laughs> Because I think around, I think that around the time you guys were doing those recording streams, I, I had a bite plate put in. I have terrible dental stuff. Like I got oh. dental insurance, like I think a year or two ago. So around that time during this, I think that was summer, right? Your guys's Dokkapon stream. Uh, I I don't know exactly. I could like pull it up and find out, but yeah, it was like it was like around that time. It was um yeah, because uh, yeah. I, I wasn't doing anything that night. I spent the whole night. I'm not sure if it was summer. I don't know. It's like this is like, um, I guess to anyone who's listening, this is uh before the hallway was hallway. Uh, originally hallway content was just my live streams, so yeah, yeah. it's kind of the... kind of weird. Yeah, and then it got transferred over into the hallway YouTube channel, right? Uh, no, it actually got um. So originally it was a podcast, the hallway experience, and then we made another channel called the hallway, just to do that's like, right. Gaming. So before we did gaming, we did it on my channel on live streams. And mm-hmm. then we did our own channel to do like pre-recorded because I mean, we can't go live every single time. And sometimes we just want to say funny shit and we just, we understand that we're going to have to cut it out, but we just want to say shit that maybe YouTube wouldn't be too happy about. So yeah, yeah. that's kind of what we yeah. did with the hallway. So yeah, you were here like kind of before you're kind of like a, without even writing and you realize you're kind of an OG. I guess I, I don't feel like an OG because I feel like the group was already established before. I mean, you know, yeah, Jimmy, of, yeah. Jimmy introduced me. I, I get tertiarily involved uh, in everything, not just real talk, but just I think hallway in general. Because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm the guy who knows the guy that knows you. You know. Yeah. <laughs> that was in October. That was in October. Oh, without a doubt, uh, last October. October fourth, twenty twenty one. Oh, I absolutely have my bite plane in then. Yeah, no. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you can you can hear it in the balloons video. The balloons video where I am uh where you, you where Jimmy was asking me like, uh, hey, it had to do with something about like a dam and how to make it fill up with water. Yeah. I care. I, I don't play balloons, but Jimmy Jimmy needed to know the balloons info and so he asked me to look it up. <laughs> yeah. And you can hear me in that explanation, you can hear almost like I almost sound like a Fuck the he's the cat in Looney Tunes, not Sylvester Stallone. That's Rocky. Um, <laughs> I don't even know the names. <laughs> uh, I uh, fucking the the cat, the cat from Looney Tunes, the mm-hmm. one with the red nose. Uh, I know who you're talking um, about. I don't know his name. Pepe Le Pew. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um. So uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that one. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine this was uh, uh, before i had a mic as well i was like i was on my laptop like because now modern hallway i'm on a gaming computer and i have a solo cast oh, but this was like no. a laptop before microphone so my audio was really bad you know it's it's all about upgrades you know that's it's part of the viewing experience you mm-hmm. know there's there's going to be people that are like yo i miss the old some guy where i kind of understand half the shit he was saying because his bassy voice doesn't pick up yeah. on his goddamn mic i mean even even now you you can't really hear the bass unless you have like 
headphones. Like I, I listen to uh, me on YouTube with like uh, no headphones, and I'm like, oh, I only hear the high end of my voice because whenever I speak, it's like it sounds to me it sounds like two voices at once, where there's like a high part and a low part. But whenever yeah. you have headphones, then you can actually hear the bass, and I'm like, whoa, I sound cool. <laughs> I mean, that is how I sound in person, but, like, that's cool that a microphone is picking. I, I like audio equipment. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. I get I get that. I'm – so the thing with me is, like, I – Rocco – there's several. I have several friends that, like, they're into tech. Like, they, mm. they know so much more about – I know how to work a computer mm. to, at the very least, but I'm not, like – I don't know animation programs. I don't know, like, audio. I don't know what the hell a bit rate is, you know? <laughs> I, I just figured out what that was, too, or something. Yeah. I, I I still don't know. So it's got a video quality, maybe. I don't mm. I don't remember. I mean, I could. But uh, yeah, bitrate is like video. It's like kind of video and audio quality. So okay, if you're live streaming, your video and audio is going to be compressed. So you want to mm -hmm. lower your bitrate so that you have one the most amount of bitrate so where you don't sound like you're on an Android, but like low and um, but low enough to where like because if it's too much, then the streaming uh, software, not the software, but the streaming website like Twitch, is going to compress it the fuck down. So where if you put too much bitrate, it's going to sound horrible if, instead of lowering it. So you want to find like the perfect medium between like low enough bitrate to where it won't compress you too much, but high enough to where you're not compressing yourself. That's, oh, uh, that's weird. So you're like you're sandwiched. You have to you're you're constantly mm -hmm. sandwiched in between in between bitrate. That's yeah. that's wacky. So having good audio on streaming has a very much diminishing returns you can mm -hmm. hear good audio equipment but it only goes to so much because twitch or youtube is going to compress the fuck out of it compared right. to uh, well it depends because there's what platforms like float plan where the audio is like very not compressed but to be fair you also pay to have the audio not compressed because float plan is kind of like a subscription uh if you don't right. know float plan is owned by linus hicktops Linus um, Tech Tips. Uh, Linus. I know the and I know the man. I know yeah. the man. Yeah, it's the Linus <laughs> Media Group company. They're it's owned by them. They made their own platform for creators who want to make their own things with high audio quality, high video. It's like high video, high audio, and um, but also like kind of like Patreon at the same time. It's like a combination of of that. It's I don't. I, I'm gonna describe it in terms that I understand. You might not understand it. It's like it's like yeah. having a paid nico nico page uh for uh, like something like nico nico doga where it has better audio okay. quality than like youtube and twitch except you can stream and make youtube right. videos on that uh on it it's kind of weird because do you know what nico nico is or am i just saying words right now you, uh, nico <laughs> when you said nico nico i remember uh uh, Nico, I remember Nico, that Nico. I, the fucking Nico Nico <laughs> kneecaps. Yeah, <laughs> I was just, just imagine. I was just imagining you and your character Frank in the fucking <laughs> in the fucking hallway uh, visual novel video, uh, yeah. and just you running up to some fool and breaking his fucking kneecaps with a hot dog. Oi, buy me hot dogs, or I'm breaking your Nico Nico kneecaps. <laughs> uh, I love that video. Yeah, no, it's um, it's a, it's like Japanese YouTube. Okay. Except oh. you, you make no money from it, and you can actually hide, uh, ex unless if you hide videos behind paywalls, which, I mean, this is a big rabbit hole, but there's a lot of Japanese ASMR YouTube uh, people who make exclusive Nico Nico videos just because of the higher audio quality, and also so they can paywall the fuck out of it. And also okay, so, so they can put sl slightly more explicit shit on there. You can't put porn on Nico Nico, but you can kind of go further because it's Japan. You you can get you can get a little bit of it, it, exotic with it. So 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 Nico Nico so Nico 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 Nico. <laughs> I I apologize to any hardcore Nico Nico people out there. I I understand that's your platform of choice and. I uh, I don't stand by the Nico Nico movement at all. I'm I'm with Nico Nico all the way. Um, so Nico Nico, <laughs> Nico Nico is a is a, is a similar like media platform than primarily Japanese. Just I'm making sure that I I got this right. Mm -hmm, primarily yeah. Japanese Japanese media platform with fruit, no pay no revenue unless you put it behind a paywall in which individuals that want to see your content then pay to see those videos. Exactly. Okay. Oh right, all right, yeah. Because YouTube doesn't have anything, anything close to that, to where you have to like pay 
to like see like a Exclusive, like the closest yeah. it's like you it's like a little bit like patreon then not like patreon um, i guess yeah but i okay it's just paywalled videos it's just paywalled videos i mean a lot of the videos on nico nuka are free but like some people paywall some other videos but also youtube kind of does have something similar with the membership program where you can give people membership it's kind of like a twitch sub and you can actually i totally hide, forgot about memberships you, yeah you, you can hide live streams and videos behind memberships so i mean that's probably why patreon's falling off but like YouTube does have that, and that's kind of what yeah. Floatplane is like Nico Nico on YouTube, except you can live stream and make videos on it, but it ha everything is paywalled. I see. But what, what, um, what did you mean by paywall by Patreon starting to fall off? Like, is that is that actually something that I, I, I haven't heard anything about this? Is this just something that's been so, happening for a bit now? Or? So Patreon kind of went public, and they're owned by, I think, an investment firm now. Or they have yeah. a lot of like shareholders kind of kind of deal. I don't know if they're like mm -hmm. open like like stock wise like actually open, but they have someone who's owning them, and essentially oh. Patreon has made a lot of like really weird features that isn't like Patreon kind of deal. Like I think at one point you can get money loans from Patreon. It's kind of weird, but oh. the reason why I say they're falling off is because a lot of the platforms nowadays are building in features like Patreon. And more people are starting to yeah. use like membership. So like, if you're like say a VTuber who primarily streams on YouTube and sometimes makes videos, it would make sense yeah. to have uh, memberships because your live chat can use exclusive member emotes. Kind of like how if you subscribe to a Twitch streamer, you have no ads on them, which is mm -hmm. the same on YouTube. It's the same as Twitch subs. So you have no ads. You get exclusive uh, uh, like a badge that like levels over time depending on how long you stay, and it also yeah. has uh, like emotes that you can add. And it's, it's like YouTube's equivalent to that, but also for YouTube, you can make exclusive videos, which is kind of like the whole point of Patreon, where it's like, oh, we have right. exclusive videos behind paywalls that we give the money. Yeah, or like podcast recordings and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. I, I am familiar with like a lot of YouTube creators and stuff like, uh, you know, they, they're not big enough for, to where ad revenue is enough to support them, mm -hmm. but they have a strong enough community that they can have a pretty decent Patreon, Patreon. to help them like subsidize that. And or there's just straight up YouTube channels that create yeah. content that don't get monetized like uh i think dead meat podcast uh no yeah dead meat uh what do you call kill count the people that do the kids oh, kill count, the horror movie those guys, the horror yeah. movie synopsis yeah those people like i know they get they frequently have to like a get sponsors and b they have a patreon as well yeah uh that's crazy yeah and yeah. then yeah 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 uh, that, that's kind of crazy yeah um yeah I don't know. YouTube's way of doing it is kind of weird because it is more like a Twitch right. thing. But I mean, Patreon isn't completely dead because you do make more money off of Patreon than YouTube. Because Twitch is a 50 50 cut now because horrible decision, by the way. But you yeah, get 50% yeah. of the money you make on Twitch goes to Twitch and half of it goes to you. Compared to YouTube, where it's, I think it's 70 20. I don't know my math. Or I don't remember uh -huh. it. It's seventy. Are those numbers out yet? Are those numbers out yet? I thought yeah, those no, were no, like they have been pretty well conceded. Okay, or concealed. No, no you call. YouTube boasts about it because Twitch did the fifty fifty thing. They're like, oh yeah, we have a better. Spot. That's right. So That's, you, I'm thinking of like ad revenue for like a basic YouTube video type thing. I'm 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 not thinking about the live stream super chats and all that. So it's probably like, oh well. Oh yeah, their ad revenue. No ad revenue. People, you used to be able to like get in trouble for it, but people have done it so much. YouTube doesn't really care about showing your ad revenue anymore. Right. Because I've seen like this dude named Spoon Kid, where he made CS:GO Lotto videos as a joke, and he used the money from the Lotto videos or like from the case opening to buy more cases to do it, just because he thought it was funny. He's a Rust YouTuber, but I know oh, that he's yeah. he's shown his AdSense before. I've known more people have shown their AdSense before. Yeah, the other YouTube, I think it's seventy thirty. I'm kind of don't remember how right. math works, but yeah. But Patreon, they take less of a cut. I think more money goes to you. Except Patreon right. is kind of a weirder platform because there's more alternatives. Although, speaking of Patreon, right. I subscribed to the uh, official Wakaliwood Patreon so I can get my name in the credits of Who Killed Captain Alex 2. <laughs> oh, shit. You were talking about that on, on the Discord a little bit ago, I weren't was, you? Yeah. Um, join, yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah, I... Join the Discord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say, because um, I remember you mentioning that, but also... I there's like not a single bit of context behind what you put down there. What the hell is Who Killed Captain Alex Two? Okay, so it's a sequel to this movie called Who Killed Captain Alex, which I haven't seen yet, but I was actually going to watch it soon. That's why I subscribed to okay. the Patreon. But it's um it's uh 
Uganda's first action movie, according to them, which I don't know if that's true or not. It probably is. It's it's an African movie studio who made a movie, and it's I I don't want to say it's bad, but like the budget is definitely a lot worse because they have less to work with. Like it's not like it's not like going to well, I mean, it's not like going to a movie theater uh, and like watching like fucking like Infinity Wars with all this CGI. It's just people with kind of green screens with basic editing programs, de- uh, basic cameras, recording and making a, an action movie. So mm-hmm. although the part of the charm is it's it's kind of bad, so it's kind of good. I me yeah, personally, yeah, that can't be that can't be eighties like schlocky action. Mm-hmm. And for me, I like that, but also I think it's fucking sick that African countries are making movies, even if it's not up yeah. to snuff with um something like uh the Avengers Hollywood. Endgame Hollywood. I yeah, yeah. Uh, even though I hate movies, uh, but like I'm so tired of like modern movies that stuff like this is like such a refresher, and like that's like me personally, my favorite movie is also also. By the way, that movie's on YouTube. It's for free. You can watch it for free. Yeah, I, I was I was gonna I was gonna I was gonna bring that up. I was gonna ask like because I feel like I've seen a lot of like Ugandan or just African like mm-hmm. centered like movies filmed with a decent amount of production just put on youtube and it's clear that these are yeah. like you know these these are african producers these are african directors it's just passion, and th- yeah. these are the, these are their passion projects and these are their films they want to be a filmmaker mm-hmm. but they don't have like the, I, I don't know their situation but you know like i'm assuming like the country that they're in they probably don't have like a whole lot of like uh what is it film grants and stuff yeah. like that because like i know like a lot of countries like australia like the u.s like we have film grants we give grants to a uh, new and upcoming uh film film creators and stuff mm-hmm. in order to help them budget their movies and stuff because it's culture, similar to a scholarship important. yeah yeah culturally important because uh, our culture is our biggest export i mean fucking we pay jazz musicians to go around the world in like landlocked countries just to play jazz which is fucking cool but yeah yeah i, I my personal favorite movie though it's a similar case this dude has been working one dude has been working on this cgi movie since the 90s it's called Killer Bean Forever. Uh, I think it got really popular. Oh Moist shit! Critical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know of it because of Moist Critical, mm-hmm. and then he got a little cameo in there, and it's like, yeah. ah, hey, I, I know that guy. And I watched that movie. It's kind of the same thing where it's like, yeah, it's not like Avengers Endgame game level, but there's like more passion and creativity behind it that I like it more than those because I hate modern movies nowadays. It's funny because I work. It's at unironically a good. Yeah, but it's like it's the really Killer good. Bean is unironically good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched it with my family. I this is funny. I wanted to get a lot of like um like just online quote unquote movies out the way. So I watched every single rat movie by Germa and then I watched the Killer Bean movie all in a row. <laughs> And Holy I, shit! I remember that day very fondly because it was very cool. Because I like I expected I didn't know much. I watched a little bit of the most critical video, but yeah. I didn't know what I was expecting. And I, I saw Killer Bean. I'm like, this is fire. So that's kind of why I'm like I want to support the <laughs> the Hollywood uh, movie. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And the dude it, followed indeed, me back yeah. on Twitter, and I was, I was like, whoa, that's sick. <laughs> that's badass. No, that's super cool. I, I'm I. I I like movies. I'm I'm a movie kind of guy. I mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a movie intellectual. I watched the menu a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you what the fuck that movie was about. <laughs> I think it's about elitism. Uh, reg- but that's like I, I I don't got the brain for understanding high concept films. But yeah. I, I do and like I do enjoy watching the art at the very least. Like I just agree. the way that the cameras are used. I I reg- whether or not I understand what's going on in a film, I like to see a good performance. Mm-hmm. And a good performance, no matter. I, honestly, I think a good performance in acting can really just transcend boundaries of language. Like, I don't have to understand what they're saying oh, yeah. because I can see the emotion in their face. There's just inherent human emotion behind a good acting. It, it, I could go on and on about that. But, mm-hmm. like, indie films and stuff, that's super cool because, like, I, I got a soft, soft, soft spot for passion projects. Oh, yeah. And I think one of, like, one of the most disheartening things, I don't know what to call it. I don't know if we have, like, a word for it, but, like almost like secondhand disappointment like you feel so incredibly crushed for someone else's dreams not coming to fulfillment and it's like yeah. something that they worked hard towards like if you, when you see what's that what's that one he was an animator who did who kill who who uh who framed roger rabbit he's the guy that isn't responsible for those movies a very famous animator director mm-hmm. um he was trying to create a movie called, uh, I think it's The Cobbler and the Thief or something like that. Mm-hmm. The I'm looking up right now, The Cobbler and the, the Thief. 
this. The, yeah, and so it was a big passion project of his. It was all going to be cell shaded animation. Oh, the Thief and the Cobbler. That's right. You can look it up, The Thief and the Cobbler. On YouTube, there's something called The Thief and the Cobbler, the Recobbled Edition. It's They pretty much grab together all the pieces of this guy's, like, magnum opus. This was his magnum opus. This man's won, I think, multiple Academy Awards mm-hmm. in his entire career. And this one movie he was trying to create was, in his own words, like, his ultimate project. This was going to be, like, what he wanted to represent him and his legacy and the animation career and forevermore. Unfortunately, it was not able to be finished and a lot of like production and producer influence and stuff like that like on the way There's a really great documentary on YouTube again that you can find about it oh, um, yeah, That sounds interesting. Yeah, absolutely. It's a super interesting and it's a really cool film It's just meant to play with like your perception optical illusions, but oh. also it's just really cool traditionally animated cell animation during the time where animation was starting to move over into CGI. Ah, that's and so it's cool. this one piece that's supposed to be like, show what cell-stated animation is meant to be in a world where it is becoming obsolete. And it's just really, really cool. But the project was never finished, and I feel so bad for this man. This man had a, this man was fucking rich as well. Ah. But you could tell, despite that, he still had a lot of passion, a lot of love and care for what he did. But he never got to fully realize it, and instead, that project, after he passed away, got passed off to other people that just didn't get the full scope that he did. Uh, it reminds it's, me of yeah. something, yeah. Um, oh, did you want to go on? Sorry. No, no, no. It's I, I, that, Honestly, that was it. I think if I talk <laughs> any more about it, I'm just going to get bad. That's yeah, but that's what, that's, what, that's, that's what I was trying to get at. Like yeah. that, that secondhand disappointment of like something that you know someone's worked really hard on. You might not know them personally, but you can tell they really cared about it, but they didn't get to do it. Mm -hmm. That sucks. But it's cool to see indie filmmaking be successful on a platform like YouTube. Yeah. Um, Or just in general, anywhere. It reminds me of this case. There's Okay, so I guess I'm going to talk about Rhythm Games. Boo-hoo, I know. But uh, (laughs) Uh, You're you're okay, man. I don't don't mind. No, I'll talk about whenever Rave or something sees this, if you ever watch this. Um, So the very, like, first rhythm game to ever like really ever exist is called Parappa the Rapper. It's pretty iconic. I mean, fucking oh, rhythm, shit. rhythm games came out the work where it's with fucking bangers already. But so Parappa the Rapper has a pretty good series. It was a uh, Parappa the Rapper. Then it was a uh, um, Jammy Lamy. Then it was Parappa the Rapper too. Eventually the series stopped. The creator's like, okay, we're done with this. And then one day they wanted to come back to it. Uh, and they yeah. tried to make this game. It's called uh, Major Minor's Majestic March, and the game sucks ass. But I watched like uh. a, I watched a video behind it, and it's kind of like like the artist who made the art. He kind of described it. He was, uh, the way he said it was like everything that could have went wrong went wrong with this project. And I just uh. and I'm just like, oh, that sucks. They're gonna like kind of like reboot the series with like a new gameplay style because like the art in that game is so cool. It's like 2D art. In like a 3D environment, kind of like Paper Mario. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, this- I was like, oh man, no, nah, this. I wish this game was good, and they didn't weren't like forced to like release in such a bad state, and like all these like conditions that bothered them. Because like the reason why Parappa existed was because Sony gave the dude money to make whatever the hell we want with no pressure, and then Parappa blew up because of how good it was, and it became an icon, and then, like, there's a lot of pressure, so any spiritual successor has to be in, like, the certain way, has to be certain, like, this and that, and yeah. like, they just wanted to make a game for the Wii, and all this, like, yeah. pressure and, like, this weird funding issues is just made, like, a garbage, and I'm just like, that fucking sucks, but yeah. it, is, it is cool whenever it the opposite happens, where, like, a person who's, like, trying to do their best actually fucking does their best and like it works yeah out. it I, turns into a, a beautiful gold gold mm-hmm. gold nugget you know <laughs> i guess i guess i can go to another tangent um there's this vtuber i really like um, pippa pippa uh i'm not actually gonna talk know. about i'm not gonna talk about her <laughs> i do like I, pippa. I it, before before we go uh, before before i respectfully okay. um <laughs> i i saw on the discord you mentioning pippa and I was like, oh, who is that? And so I looked up Pippa, and then I went down the rabbit hole of like, oh, shit, wait. 
I don't really like VTubers. I kind of like, I don't know if I'm outing myself. I don't know anything about the VTuber space. Uh -huh. Pippa seems pretty, pretty cool. I don't know, man. Uh, I'm not a big, I'm not the biggest fan of her YouTube content. Mm -hmm. I do like her live streaming stuff. I feel like she has really great chat interaction because that's a real thing she for me. She mainly streams, yeah. Yeah. No, I fucking but, uh, I, I love Pippa, and she's also like unhinged, kind of like she it, she reminds me of our friend group, where like at one moment she could be like I was watching because I, I thought it was funny. She played Nekopara, which is hilarious. That's that's the same kind of game. And yeah. before she even started, she was talking about some VTuber drama, and she was like, "Oh, you should go yourself." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I was like, "Dude, she's like literally like reminds me of like." Our friend group. That's why I like her a lot. She's really funny, and kind of unhinged. But uh, no, any, that's, yeah. But anyways, before, <laughs> sorry about that. But um, no, you're all good. But um, uh, the thing I'm talking about before, like uh, I guess this VTuber, she's mm -hmm. a Hollow Life VTuber. She's very successful now. Her name is uh, Hachomashi Suisei. I hope I pronounced that right. One of probably one of my favorite YouTubers, if not my favorite VTuber. I adore her music. Her music is great. But she started off as an independent VTuber who kind of busted her ass off. She worked, like, multiple jobs. And she had, like, she wanted to do this so much. She even rigged her own model, made her own model. She paid her pocket money uh, to just make the music she wanted to make, which, by the way, was a good song. She paid for mm -hmm. her own music video, paid for producers to help her out. She even made music videos for other VTubers to get money to make more music. But eventually it was starting to like get too much to where it burned out on her. So she's like, oh, maybe right. I should apply to an agency. And every single major agency turned her down, including Hololive, which she's a part of now. And then eventually she's like, um, well, the reason why they turned her down is because there's kind of this thing about VTubers is that if you have a past, it's it's a taboo to have a past life, and if you have it, you need to erase it. So if I were to become a VTuber and do a VTuber agency, they'd probably be like, hey, they would check out my old stuff and be like, if they don't like it, they would be like, we don't want you. But if they do like my personality, they'd be like, hey, that's great. Can you be, um, I like your audition. Can you become this VTuber? You can, don't touch your previous personality. Don't mention it and you can no longer use it. So if you were a VTuber, if I was a VTuber, let's say some guy was a VTuber, and I right. joined Hololive, I would have to completely erase so the some guy VTuber come um, and, st and be this new person. Uh, but uh, Suisei was like, hell no, that's my identity. I want to keep this. And I was like, that's one that's right. based. And like, no one does that. They're usually people are like, okay, I'll become a new thing. But she's like, nah. And she got denied from every company because of that. And then she was like, oh, please take me back. She signed with Hollow Life, but under their music label, which doesn't exist now. And she, mm -hmm. her, her management was horrible at that time. And eventually she was able to work things out, get uh, pushed onto the main branch, collab with people, bust her ass off, make more music. And eventually she just fucking blew up. And, like, all of her hard work and, like, I guess kind of, like, suffering paid off. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's fucking sick. And that's why I kind of, I, I respect her a lot. And I, I, st I keep up with her music, yeah. And I'm just like, wow, fucking great. I'm like, holy shit. Like, what a good story to tell. That is wild. So I'm, I'm not too familiar about the VTuber world at all. Hmm. I know that there's, it's like, it's like, um... I get yeah you you said the word right there agencies so I there's VTuber agencies and so you have to apply to become part of the VTuber agency and yeah. I'm assuming it's it sounds like a content house almost like for VTubers if is is that like comparable or um I would compare it more to an idol agency like something like BTS uh like Blackpink or whatever they're called. I don't know much about K-pop but like I'm just saying big names that maybe you might know them but like BTS uh, so where I like, definitely heard them. <laughs> Like you audition for a company and then you're signed under them. So the reason why you want to go under a company is so you can relieve some of the pressure off you. So can you just you can just focus on performing. Um, I don't right. mean this disrespectfully, but most like people who do singing are entertainers compared to like just being yeah. artists. So like they pay people to make yeah. everything for them, sometimes even lyrics, and all they do is singing. And like I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. If you're just um, an entertainer. Yeah. 
that's great. Continue doing what you're doing, but also artists tend to do everything by themselves. And you can be yeah. an entertainer and an artist at the same time. And let's say you want to be an entertainer and an artist, or just an entertainer, and you want to release some of the pressure. You sign with an agency and like, oh, like, oh, hey, we can take care of like sponsorships. We can take care of like mm -hmm. people. We can get we can get people to produce music for you, so you can just focus on either lyric writing or. We can get someone to take care of their writing, and you can just sing. Because like, there's Hollow Love YouTubers who just sing. They don't write the music they make. They don't produce the music they make. And I don't mean that in a bad way. They just want to focus on singing, which I get that. Right. It's they, like, they, it's, don't, they don't want to bother with the business side. Yeah, like, it's like, they probably don't know how, or they maybe do, but they've done that for or years just, or whatever, and they just, they just don't, don't want like to it. fucking... Yeah. yeah. And it's like it's, it's, not the it's, fun part. it's more of like an insurance kind of deal where it's like, oh, people can help me out. And also if something happens, my managers can take care of it. And let's say you are like a normal VTuber because a lot of VTubers don't just make music. A lot of them just play games. Yeah. I, our managers can help with copyright because, you know, having a company uh, help you protect against copyright means that less uh, more people are less uh, are gonna, uh, not trying to fuck with you. And you're. Yeah. Because, you know, like there's a fucking company behind you. No one's going to mess with the corporation. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you also got a corporation behind you. Yeah. Po possibility for benefits. I mean, for t I don't know. I don't know if they are like offering retirement for VTubers. If so, you know what? That's amazing. <laughs> if like did, if, if we're cool. if we're starting to get into the era where like people can get 401ks for being underneath like a content agency. Mm -hmm. That's a that's 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 cool. cool. That's cool. I think overall, I think that's more cool than I don't know. I mean, I don't know the logistical side of it because you know mm -hmm. uh, eventually no matter what on the internet people fall off mm -hmm. people just kind of be they they have their heyday they kind of lose their relevancy they kind of then just become oh dude he inspired me to do this and then those people that got inspired then become the new heads of yeah. heads of whatever media platform it, it just happens you know yeah. the king becomes dethroned but you know when in a usually cordial way mm -hmm. I, I eventually want to do a deep fat dive on VTubers because uh, I didn't come out like the womb. No, well, my I guess my experience with VTubers was that I knew about VTubers since 2016, uh, mm -hmm. which is like a lot before more people did. But I only knew it because I, I heard of uh, Kizuna Ai, which is kind of like the very like she's not the first VTuber, but she's the first like major VTuber who inspired literally everyone to do this. So right. I, I watched some of her videos and I I found her out because she collabed with like. Well, my first little favorite YouTuber was thing like the Anime Man, and she also did collab yeah. with fucking PewDiePie, uh, <laughs> and so oh yeah, there you go. So I was like, that's how I found out about her. So I'm like, I've known about this VTuber thing, but then I kind of forgot about it. And then once COVID happened, they kind of blew up. And me personally, when I first found out of VTubers, I was annoyed. I was like, I'm so tired of seeing this clip of, uh, I, I guess because I know the name of Hosho Mining being like, I'm horny, and I'm like, this cringe. To me, it was like, oh, this right. is cringe. I hate this. This VTuber stuff. All I see is just, it's just cringe, cringe, cringe. But mm -hmm. me personally, this is why uh, I fucking love the internet, because I always do this. I, I, I'm like, but I, I do love me a good rabbit hole. So it doesn't matter right. what my initial opinion is. I said I'm gonna spend this entire summer figuring out what this VTuber thing is. I'm gonna deep dive and figure out what this thing is and everything about it and that's why i'm so i guess yeah. knowledgeable and i keep up with vtubers nowadays because i did that initial deep dive which is kind of why i want to make a video because i think vtubers are pretty cool i think they get a kind of a bad rap and i also uh think that some people who may think they might not like them might actually like them because originally i kind of hated them and there are some vtubers that i just straight up didn't like uh and now i'm like oh i actually like their content like hoshon marine was the first like vtuber i kind of got exposed to um, in terms of like memes, I thought her memes were really cringe and annoying, but she's one of my favorite VTubers now. I think her she's pretty funny. I don't really like that she's kind of like the horny VTuber out of like Hollow Life, but I do think she has one a good singing voice, and two she's just kind of funny, and she's also is a that, pretty good artist. She's the pirate girl. Is that what they? Uh, I I I. I <laughs> if you ever see, oh, she looks like if she looks like okay, pirate girl Hollow Life. I'll. <laughs> Look that up in a tab. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna ask. So it's so with the Hollow Live. I'm assuming it's kind of like, it, it's starting to sound more and more. It's more like a, a TV, not a TV channel. Fucking what is it? Like a, a, a you know, like a, a, what is? There's a better term for it. It's like a cor corporation. You know, like you have, you have uh, 
what is it? Food Network. Yeah, Food Network. You've got Bobby <laughs> Flay. You've got Guy Fieri. <laughs> you got that other fucking person. You got all those chefs and people, and they all have their own TV shows on there. Mm-hmm. But you frequently see each of them make a cameo or make an appearance in each other's other episodes and stuff, you right? You know what? That and is... each of them have their own little <laughs> shtick, right? Like Bobby Flay is fuck Bobby Flay. Guy Fieri is Diners big. Diners. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Bobby, yeah, uh, <laughs> who is that? Adam Richmond eats a lot of food. There's mm-hmm. the guy that eats uh, the bald guy. I, I, I don't bald guy Dude. that eats worms. Fucking you're Andrew on. Zimmerman. <laughs> you're, Andrew Zimmerman. You're you're like pretty much that is the weirdest analogy I've ever heard, but that's exactly it, pretty much. So yeah. I'll explain this. Cover Corp is the company that made the VTuber thing. Uh, not the VTuber thing. Hollow Live. Cover Corp's only thing is Hollow Live. So it's like, I guess, kind of like, I guess, I don't know why they're called Cover Corp. But Hollow Live is the company that they're more of an idol. They're like, so each company has their own. Now, by the way, there's also independent VTubers. Uh, but each company has their own like set of like, like, like things like they, they're kind of known for. Hollow yeah. Live is known for being a bit of an idol. They're like kind of based off of an idol agency, so right. A lot of their that one they call their thing they call them talents, obviously because like you know that's what you call them in the idol industry. They're talents. Right, right. So each one of their gen, uh, people are talents. They re- uh, they kind of popularize this format, but they release their talents in generations. So you got Hollow Live. Uh, when I say Hollow Live and Gen, I'm referring to the Japanese brand. So Hollow Live Gen Zero, One, Two, Three, something. The gamer, I know there's a Hollow Life gamers one. Uh, I don't know the oh, I don't know no. the exact order. They all play games, but also a lot of them make music. And every year they host a big convention where they have um just like thirty like projected models. Like the way they do it is fucking sick. Uh, but they have Holy three. Shit. They have like thirty projected models and like every single person's in like a mocap suit and like they sing and dance for like a bunch of audiences. So it's like it's all like music based, but also they do a lot of gaming and stuff as well. And like individually they do gaming, but they also work on music and do like idol stuff. So that's kind of what Hollow Life does. And the reason why I know about uh, like uh, about their performances because I was morbidly curious and I spent a hundred dollars to watch their virtual concert uh, last year. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> it was all morbid curiosity, got, yeah. but it was he, he, pretty cool. I'm not. He got, he got a bit. He got a bit lost in that in that virtual <laughs> VTuber sauce, my man. I, oh my god! I, I got lost in the sauce, but honestly, it was kind of worth it because I've never seen like such cool technology be used. Because I'm like, how are they doing this? Because like Nintendo's kind of done something similar with Splatoon, but it's like yeah. and like same with like uh, a lot of like the Vocaloid stuff. Like back in like 2012 when like. Hatsune Miku was popular. There was like right. concerts and like you can tell it was a projection. Yeah, the yeah the, the, the Hatsume yeah, yeah the Hatsune Miku. You, you can tell it's a projection, yeah. but like when you watch this like concert, it looks like the thirty models actually on the stage, and it's like I'm like, well, how are they doing this? <laughs> I'm like, oh that's, my that's god, actually pretty cool. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Okay, so it's 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 a live action mocap captured that's then projected mm-hmm. as their vtuber model and yeah. in a in a in an you, you that is like the most physical you can get with that person's vtuber model Pretty much, meanwhile yeah. they're like in the back in like the fucking janitor's closet <laughs> with like white, <laughs> white ping pong balls taped all over them in a black suit and a t pose just sweating bullets like mm-hmm. i can't fuck up this dance <laughs> i can't fuck up this dance yeah no but, uh, but every shit. every every agency is known for something i don't know much right. about niji sanji i can't give much input but even then like hollow is kind of weird because they're so big that's like how the japanese side operates but their english side which is what it's i'm very big into, their yeah. e- their english side is more of like the traditional like we got these group of people just to play games and if they want to make music right. they can make music and a lot of them do make music like every single one of the um the first generation of uh well one they don't use generation so i guess i'll call it by the proper name because it's kind of i guess a little bit disrespectful so right guess, so wait, 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 wait well, real quick so mm-hmm. what the jan is, is i didn't mean to interrupt but no, just to make sure i'm good. understanding this no i'll explain this to you. I <laughs> I, i'm feeling like this is like this is turning into a, like a crash course in vtuber history i got like a little <laughs> notepad in front of me and, I, and i'm checking with the teacher to make sure i'm uh so that's good. no no it's all good um uh 
So with the Japanese VTubers situation, again, similar to Food Network, I got that down. Uh, <laughs> exactly like Food Network. Uh, uh, only question I've got for the teacher here is which VTuber is most like Guy Fieri? <laughs> <laughs> um, Who is the Guy Fieri of the Japanese VTuber? So there's this one VTuber, and she cooks. Okay. okay. She, she cooks... <laughs> And she does shit posts. She's oh. a she's a she's a Japanese VTuber. Okay. She can speak. She's learning English. It's funny. She moved to Australia, so her English is turning into like Aussie English, which is kind of funny. And her deal is that she cooks a lot, but she sucks at cooking. Uh-huh. <laughs> but <laughs> she's the most like Guy Fieri, as like kind of like Guy Fieri, where he's in like diners, drivers, and dives, where he'll like cook everything at a restaurant he'll eat whatever the fuck he wants and it doesn't matter if it's good or bad usually it's good though she right. she make she does shit posts she makes food that's really bad and by the way she puts bugs in her foods because it's really funny right <laughs> and she makes she makes shit posts she's like the most chaotic like person ever but that kind of reminded me of guy fury but if you want like a guy fury who's good at cooking there's an independent vtuber who's not actually japanese her name is onikiri and oh. she is a VTuber who just does cooking streams. And she's actually like a, like a real, like really good cook, but she's like the good cook. But, um, uh, the VTuber I'm talking about, her name is, uh, Akai Hato, but mo- you can just type in Hachima, which is kind of easier to spell, um, on YouTube. And she is right. like the chaotic, um, VTuber of the Japanese side, but also she cooks and she's pretty funny, which that's kind of why I liked guy. He was pretty funny too. Right. And also, she has like this is really funny. She's probably one of my. She's also one of my favorites too. She has a lore. <laughs> she she got bored one day uh, and uh, had a subscriber milestone. She said, "I want to make a story," and mm-hmm. she just did it. And it was like it was so good that uh, and kind of messed up that cover had to like tell her to stop, <laughs> which kind of made her upset. But it was a really good story, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Um, she's kind of inspired me to make uh, uh, a couple of videos. Even I want to make a cooking video one day, which I actually is. attempted, yeah. but uh, it didn't go well because I didn't have equipment. But yeah, what was yeah. I talking about Dude, originally? Uh, well, VTubers, because I asked you which yeah. VTuber was most like Guy Fieri, and then you explained uh, the bro- the the VTuber before Onigiri. Uh, it's uh, Hachima because you were just spl- explaining Hachima and I, you were saying maybe Guy Fieri but I was thinking in my head aha that's sweet as chef as fuck that's, uh, <laughs> that's funny that is, oh, but yeah, um, yeah. um but no, but I we. I was. I was asking you about. Uh, about the. I was gonna ask you about the Japanese Hall of Life gens because it sounds like there's like there's waves of them. Like there's gonna be like they do a wave of auditions uh-huh. for Japan for Japanese VTubers, and then that's Gen whatever, mm-hmm. and then, you know, they let that run. They let that ride, and they. Uh, what do you call? They let that run. They let that ride, and then, shoot, it's at the tip of my tongue. They get got this. Got this. No. Uh, yeah, they, they, you know, they just let them run. They they let them do their shit for maybe like a year or two. I don't know how. I don't know what the. I don't know what they do in between gens. Um, okay. I don't know what's going on in between Gen Five and Gen Six of of the Japanese Hollow Live. Okay, right? so they release their VTubers in waves. They wave. introduce a new type. Okay, so it's kind of weird. They introduce their VTubers in waves, but they don't get rid of them. So like, they're. I'm pretty sure every single member of Gen Zero, the first generation. None of yeah. them have quit, and they're still doing what they're doing to this very day. Okay. And there are—I don't even know what generation they're on. They're like—they've gone pretty far deep, but essentially each generation is kind of like themed. So every model is themed. So um, oh. the one that that pirate girls are part of, her thing—it's uh, I think it's Gen Five, but the official name is Hollow Life Fantasy. Okay. So they have an, an a VTuber who's uh who has a knight design, but she also is kind of like, I guess a mommy type figure. But the person who actually she does the VTuber model isn't like that. So she's more of just like a cozy uh, VTuber. There's um an elf girl. I think there's two of them actually. Uh, there's the pirate. Um, and there's I think 
I could be getting my gens mixed up. I think there's a, I don't know if the sheep one is a part of it, but like each, each VTuber generation, it's more of like different models come out. Right. So like, okay. cause like you're auditioning for like a model essentially. Oh, you don't, you don't bring your own model. You get assigned one. See, that's, that's, that's exactly why Suisse was so against getting rid of her model. She wanted to be a part of this company, but not get rid of her model. You have to get rid oh. of your past identity to become a part of this. You're auditioning for a model, except you don't even know what model you're getting. <laughs> they they audition your personality, and then according to your personality, whatever model they're looking, that they made, if you fit that personality with that model, they assign you to it. So like, an example, like there's this VTuber named Pecora, and she's like very hyper energetic. Here, I'll describe her, and you can guess like what um, model yeah, yeah. she has. Uh, I'll tell <clears throat> you, it's an animal character. She's very energetic. Okay. Uh, she she laughs a lot. She likes chaos. She's played Minecraft a bit. She likes to do like TNT and griefing, um, and she does a lot of like uh, like shit posting, but not like like Hachimal level shit posting. But she makes a lot of memes. And she likes to joke around a lot. She's a bit of a of a jester, and she um, uh, her model's an animal character. Uh, can you guess what kind of animal it is? How many guesses do I get? Is, can we make this a game? <laughs> sure, you can get three guesses. Okay, dope. Um... Just, it's just a regular. Like, it's not like some like very like specific animal you, you could just be like think, fox yeah. rabbit wolf like just something like that i think first and foremost i'm gonna go rat that just sounds like just a rat type personality you rat? know that's just just fucking rat mode you know i think that's 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 my second that's my first answer okay if that's not true i think the second i think the second guess i'm going for i'm thinking like a raccoon maybe okay. something like that <laughs> okay here i think um... <laughs> I think you're the animals you're going for. I said they're kind of basic animals. A raccoon's a little bit too exotic. A raccoon's too exotic. I, I'm, you know what? Okay, fair. You, you got to keep okay. in mind these are Japanese people. I don't know if they have raccoons in Japan. Well, they got tanukis, don't they? That's like a pretty much a raccoon. If it if it was gonna be a rec, uh, if it, if it was gonna be a a, a raccoon, it'd actually just be a tanuki. And I think oh, okay. the, the way they characterize Tanukis in Japan are kind of like how they do it with Mario, where they're like kind of cute creatures, not like gross trash monsters who like attack you for staring at them weird. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Okay. So Here, clearly you, it's that, not rat so you, or, or, <laughs> or raccoon. Uh, I never confirmed the rat thing, but it's not raccoon. I'll give you your second guess back. Oh, you, here, you just go off, go off. <laughs> You're on permission to go off. Uh, uh, sir, let me think. Off. <laughs> let me let me think. Okay, so I already said rat. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. what the? F you know, as soon as I said, "Ooh, can I can I get mus multiple guesses?" I immediately forgot like every single other animal in the world. It's... Uh, I don't know, panda, panda, and tiger. Okay, I feel like panda panda would be too chill. Uh, she's a rabbit. I actually said it. <laughs> oh, she's a rabbit. Yeah, she's a chaotic uh, rabbit. Oh, it I was thinking of Peepa because she's also a rabbit, isn't she? Yeah, she's also a rabbit. <laughs> oh, maybe you should have thought. Are of Peepa. rabbits just characterized as chaotic and like probably wild cause... in Japanese culture? Actually, I feel like it's because of America, because of Looney Tunes, like Bugs Bunny. Oh shit. Man, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. To me, it was kind of obvious. Like, if I would have heard that, that probably would have been my guess. But yeah, she's a rabbit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To me, I guess when I think rabbit, I don't think of, like, chaotic. I think... I don't fucking fair. know. That, that's, just, that's fair. Just, I think of, like, I, I see a rabbit as, like, the chef. I see a chef rabbit, almost. I, I don't know. That, like, a vegetarian <laughs> chef. That's interesting. Ratatouille. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, straight up ratatouille. I don't know. <laughs> For, ratatouille, but the rat is a is a is a. I don't know what the rat rat from ratatouille's name is, but it's the rat. But it's instead of it's a, it's a rabbit. <laughs> uh, but but anyways, before we got off on that yeah. game, essentially she auditioned her personality and she got assigned that model. She didn't know what she was going for. Oh, yeah. so that's kind of how the gens work. They just you audition for a model, and each generation is kind of like a theme. Like the the latest generation is called a uh, Halox. And it, yeah. their theming is it's a secret organization, and their goal is to take over uh, the world. So they have just kind of like I guess this lolly character who kind of has like demon horns in her. She has like a, a pet bird. Uh, right. I actually like her. She's pretty. She's pretty funny. Um, oh, some guy said it. Lollies. <laughs> he likes them. Shut the I don't. Fuck. Fuck. Shut the fuck. I don't. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> 
It, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Just, 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 I, just keep it out of my house. I, I, I use the word lolly because it's the only word I know. But and then there's yeah. a there's another character who it's more of um it's like a it kind of like not owl but it's a, it's a bird thing. She has a pet owl. Oh, by the way, like almost every one of the uh, Hollow Life VTubers has like a little like pet kind of deal. Uh, okay. Uh, I another I, one. I have one. Qu- <laughs> I'm sorry. Go, go, go okay. off. Another one's kind of like. It's a little red Riding Hood type character, except she has a mask that looks like an orca, so people just call her like an orca well. Oh, okay. Um, oh. Oh. And another one's a samurai, and a, um, who actually is modeled after a tanuki. She has a pet tanuki. And oh, then shoot. I think another one is, um, well, she's not an animal girl, but she's just a samurai. She has a pet tanuki, though. And then another one is, I'm trying to remember, is a coyote, but not like. A, like a, a bad coyote she's like a pink coyote who's more of a crazy scientist but like each, coyote. yeah but like each one of these like generations like they just have like a theme and then like they have models that kind of fit the theme and you audition I for see. the model and that's kind of how it works for like companies compared to like independent vtubers right. although it's kind of weird because now even independent vtubers are making their own companies <laughs> how like v <laughs> how long how how long have you been in swimming in this vtuber sauce like how exposed are you to it like um since how summer... much has seeped into your vein how much has seeped into your veins okay summer of 2020 but i'll keep it a stuck with you even though i know a lot i don't actually watch them all the time hey you i oh, know sorry about that i know a lot of it about uh vtubers but uh, i don't actively watch them like all the time I just kind of watch them. If, like, if someone I like is streaming, I'll watch them. But I really haven't been in the sauce recently. But it's not because I hate VTubers. It's just because I don't have the time or they don't stream when I'm, like, not busy. So so this is, like, a residual knowledge just from your past ex- escapades. And yeah, like, this, is just, this is just knowledge. Of high I've exposure. Gained. It's just knowledge I've gained because, again, I like going into rabbit holes and I like finding out as much as I can. So this is just stuff I've researched while also watching it. And I guess to give a little bit of a background, the first VTuber, I besides Kazuna Ai, but the first, like, modern VTuber I've gotten into was... Uh, um, I, I know all my friends are going to hate me and some people on the internet are going to hate you. The first VTuber I got into was uh, Mori Kalaipi or Kalaipi Mori. I don't know exactly how. Why Why? Why? why is there controversy around uh, Mori Kalaipi person? A lot of people think she's annoying. A lot of people ah. think she's cringe and a lot of people think she... Uh, her, a lot of people hate her music. <laughs> Inc- oh, inc- including Rocco. He hates her music. He, he does not like Mori music. Oh <laughs> shit! Okay, I think I've heard the tail end of a conversation mm-hmm. that you and Rocco have had about this character on the hallway Discord. Hey, listeners, check down in the link in the description below, and That's you'll find a I link to hey. the amazing hey. hallway Discord. You can meet all sorts of colorful characters, such as Delta Pilk, Girl Milk, The Return of the King, Boy Milk, Shitty Opinions on God, and Man, Ara 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 Ano, Art. Ticks, Ulda Bui, <laughs> Tenno, Warner Co. Alt, Beefy, Cogwheel, Corrupted Death, M, Ma. <laughs> There's a lot of people. Uh, yeah, join our, di- join our Discord. If you're new here, you'll probably click right in. There are, we kind of popped off with our recent. Um, balloons video but there's some people who joined the discord because of that video and you know what yeah. they there's one dude i think his name is like sturman he fits right in so like feel he, free to join like we're, we're just trying to get people to join just to have fun with we're just here to create a like, cool positive we're not maybe well, slightly edged toxic, maybe toxic. slightly <laughs> not toxic we're not creating a toxic we're we're creating a cool uh Fuck an eclectic fans, <laughs> for the money I hate oh, every. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just we're the the um the model of the hallway is ju- uh, just dudes being bros invite people who you think will be cool. Yeah, and you know. Yeah. Positive, <laughs> po- positive, 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 man. Po- I I wouldn't say positive. That's a little bit misleading. We tell each other off ourselves all the time. <laughs> that's because we're toxic bros, positivity all the <laughs> way. No, to- you know. To- I- we're, we're because here. we can't be toxic either though it's true not on video there's a double standard within the hallway discord but for the most part we'd like to think that we're an overall beneficial experience and 
uh, join, join addition. The, join the hallway rabbit hole. I'm going to tell you right now, as a person who's been a part of the hallway since the very beginning and before hallway, the lore is deep. <laughs> join the, join join the, the rabbit hallway. Hole. Join the hallway. Join the hallway Discord. Get be, get told to keep yourself safe by Rocco. Be, be be like me, where I go down the VTuber rabbit hole. Join the hallway rabbit hole. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> if you have any more questions about VTuber, like just in general, I will explain it to you because I've gone through the effort of learning pretty much everything, including I, drama. Yeah. If you ever want to hear about any of the drama, I don't really uh, like to keep up with the drama. <laughs> It's just that I've experienced yeah. the drama with the VTubers I cared about, and it kind of made me a little bit sad, but yeah. <laughs> the only thing I, for the most part, I'd say miss me with that shit, but I, I, the only thing I would really say is, like, I have a, what kind of drama would even pop up with the VTuber community? Because I'm assuming, like, for the most part, it's you're just creating content together. So I feel <laughs> like the only real possible drama that can come up is, like, like well someone kind of monopolizing like a collaboration or something yeah. or like someone getting like that's the only real thing i can see and i i personally man like um, the viewers are gonna go to the person that they like the most if you're collaborating with someone and they pop off more than you from that collab i mean that's just the way the cookie crumbles i mean like uh what there's that really one guy ludwig, ludwig right yeah. ludwig started off as like you know he was he was collaborating with QT, and then he popped off way more than QT, and now they're now they're a couple. You know yeah. that that's unrelated, but you know it's a thing. Like it, it just happens. Some people um, that you collab with will become bigger than you. I'll just be real with you. The drama is very toxic. Um, oh really? The, what? The, okay, so I said that Cover Corp or Hollow Live is kind of like an idol agency. Yeah, uh, Japanese people are really into idols. And their idol oh. culture is kind of toxic. And also, since they're a Japanese company, um, uh, Asian people, uh, this is just my personal experience, Asian people aren't really cool with each other on the internet. Um, so Really? There's not like a online camaraderie? You know how, well, if you're like Japanese, you'll probably hang out with Japanese people. But if you're like Japanese, yeah. Korean... Uh, let's just say that, like, y there's obviously normal people, but let's just say there's crazy people out there. Um, yeah. There's a VTuber who who got harassed by China for mentioning Taiwan was a country. What? Yeah, and uh, uh. a lot of stuff happened. There's another VTuber who leaked Discord logs, and people thought she was dating someone, and a lot of people got mad at her. So yeah, there there's kind Whoa. of there's kind of there's kind of a dark side to VTubers. I don't really like to keep up with it, but right. the VTuber one of the so the with the China thing, it affected the VTuber I, I really like the most, one of them. Except nowadays they're right. doing fine. They're still VTubering. They're just now an independent VTuber. And then the other one who got affected um, by it, uh they kind of just continued going, so they're still going. Um, but yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's a bit of drama. I wouldn't really. So does the drama primarily stem from the VTubers own fan base rather than from the VTubers like coworkers and constituents? Yes. It's more of the crazy. Oh. They're, they're, I guess, uh, in the Japanese idol fan world, culture, right? Yeah. They're called, uh, gachikois essentially. They're like crazy fans. Ooh. Okay. And that's, so that's not just a VTuber thing. That's more of an idol yeah, thing. Yeah. That's why like. You know how people say like, "Oh, K-pop fans are toxic." That's it's the same thing for K-pop fans. K-pop people, there's people. K-pop experience the same thing, yeah. Yeah, K-pop. There's been people that have been like doxxed because they like said like in a Twitter post, like oh, I don't really is. like K-pop. Yeah, and then, and then like, the, the, the crazy. Fan, I don't. I don't off. know what it's called in like Korean. I don't. I, I'm right. assuming they might have their own like term of gacha koi if it's not the same thing. Uh, but yeah, yeah, there's a lot of those fans because uh, I know a lot of people who are into like like k-pop uh who are just chill you know like my mm -hmm. sister recently got into k-pop and she's chill she's kind of a, doesn't like that she 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 doesn't like that uh i i know that she got into k-pop but i kind of bounced it out and i told her hey but i like vtubers so like but she but she kind of like doesn't care though because she knows i'm kind of a weeb because i actually got into anime but i kind of bounced it out being like yeah i like vtubers and i mean hell i've even bought vtuber cds before so like i mean I, i'll bounce out my cringe with your cringe and although she doesn't really like me 
uh, asking her about her K-pop stuff, but um, she's pretty chill when it comes to it. She's not one of those crazy fans. Although I did make a bunch of jokes about this member called Jungkook because I just think Oof. he's the only. I didn't make bad jokes. I just thought right. he's the only guy I know. So I'm just like mm-hmm. every time I hear a song, that's I the beats, name you're gonna default to. I'm just know? like that's I'm the like, name you're I'm like is that Jung to. is that Jungkook? And my sister kind of played along with it. She got me a BTS Jungkook photo card. And she got me a full card of just him singing on stage. And oh, I don't shit. know shit about K-pop, but I just yeah. think it's... She knew that I would like it because I like stuff that's funny and for bits. Right. So she got me two pieces of pretty... Like, like by the way, like K-pop fans love photo cards. So the fact that I have one is kind of crazy. But I have an official BTS photo card, an official like BTS, like, like, um, like uh, I guess, like postcard from an uh, album CD of one of their live performances, which is kind of crazy merch to have for someone who's not into gay pop. You said us ransom money. I could, but essentially my sister's pretty chill with it. And she even played along with my joke of liking John Coop just because he's the only one I know. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Obvi- obviously not. Ev- obviously not everybody's like a crazy K-pop stand oh, stuff. Yeah. Like it, it is a minority. I, K-pop's a very popular thing. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be a lot of fans, and if you have a lot of people liking this one thing, you're also going to get like just you know like relatively, you're going to get a, a a weird community mm-hmm. that seems like a big portion but still overall a smaller bit yeah. that are just really overzealous i was looking it up uh the south korean culture has a term for a crazy fan and it seems to be i might mispronounce this uh but it's s-a-s-a-e-n-g or sasang i believe wow. is how you pronounce it uh a sasang is a fan is an obsessive fan who stalks or engages in other behaviors constituting an invasion of the privacy of korean idols drama actors or other public figures that is exactly what a uh, gachikoi is for the Japanese uh, uh, idol scene yeah. as well. So, so they got it. As, they, they also have it. It yeah. might just be overall idol idol culture. It, it I is, don't. It is one hundred percent idol culture, and the thing that uh, this is calling back to, like probably like thirty minutes ago, but Hollow Live En, since they're not really like focused on idleness, they don't really suffer from that issue. The only thing that the uh, English VTubers deal with is 4chan. <laughs> oh, how do you, how does 4chan affect the English VTubers? Is it just because it's 4chan? It's just because it's 4chan. A lot of 4chan people go after these VTubers uh, just because it's uh, Keck W funny, and not it's not it's not always that bad because you know I mean 4chan is a chaotic mess. 4chan is kind of weird when it uh, in relation to VTubers. Um, because there's some VTubers who think 4chan's funny. Like, Pippa mm-hmm. is pretty, at, uh, like, like she, like, a lot of, like, VTubers don't mention 4chan, but, like, Pippa's, like, kind of, like, the 4chan VTuber kind of deal. Like, oh. like she, she makes a lot of, like, jokes that, like, a typical 4chan would do, which is why I like her, because I'll keep it a stack with you. <laughs> My early days on the internet was reading and listening to a lot of 4chan stuff. <laughs> Oh shit, so, dude! So yeah, I, I, I mean, I was lost in the VTuber and 4chan sauce. I was, Holy bit, shit. I, was, I, was, I was into the 4chan stuff back in the day. Like, uh, I, I really, so like, I, I get it. So that's kind of why people call Pippa like unhinged and like based. Uh, but that's also oh. why some 4chan people hate her because she's like, oh, people think she's the 4chan person. Um, but yeah, but like, there's a lot of VTubers who like. I mean, if you call the trolls out, the trolls are going to fight back. So, like, yeah. there's some VTubers who just ignore the trolls, and eventually, like, they just stop harassing it. But there's some, like, EN VTubers who are like, man, fuck the trolls, fuck these people, fuck that. And that's kind of what Mori did a little bit. So mm-hmm. a lot of, like, the trolls kind of went after her, which is kind of why yeah. 4chan kind of hates her. But also, Mori is kind of a... Mori, the reason why people don't like her is because she's a bit of a controversial figure in the VTuber world. Some people just don't like her music. And wait, my, wait, wait. Who's Mori? Mori. Mor- Mori Kalaipi, the the VTuber. Mori Kalaipi first really. That's right. The one that Rocco, the, the one that Jimmy doesn't like. Yeah. Um, my opinion on Mori is I like her content, and I will say I do like some of her music. Um, uh, there's there. Okay, so a reason why people hate her music is one, just some people just don't like it. But a lot of reason why people are like so toxic about it is because she has a lot of fans that are like, oh my god, peak music. 
I love your music. And it's just a bunch of fans being like, I love all your songs. And some people are just yeah. are like the bl- the blatant blind following of someone because you idolize them type thing. It's, it's in the name idol, you know, it's, like it's, it's either it's, it's either that or it's just that she has fans and people are kind of annoyed that she has fans because they don't really like the stuff that she does. So people right. try to go after her. And so. So, yeah, that's kind of why people like really it's either like. Because, like, from their point of view, it's, like, people either really like their music or they really hate it. And mm-hmm. people kind of just ignore the in-between, which is what I'm a part of, where it's, like, I think Maury's a good artist, but even I will criticize her stuff um, whenever I don't like it. Like, her newest album, I listen to every single song, and I don't mean this in a hateful way, but I did not like a single song in that album. Do you um, hear that, listeners? Join the hallway <laughs> Discord and rail some guy to the ground. Bully me. Don't let him get a single thought across in that Discord channel. Okay, yeah. But but also, I will say that her EP, her very first EP being uh, yeah. Your Mori, I th- like every single one of those songs. And I liked it so much that I just straight up bought the CD to it. I just got oh, it from shoot. Japan and I bought it here. I was like, I like these songs. I think they're fucking fantastic. And like her right. older music, I'm like, there's two songs I like from her first album. The rest of them I don't really like, but they're mm-hmm. not really meant to be amazing. Some of them are kind of like yeah. joke songs. But then like, so like, like, um, but then compared to her newer stuff, where it's like she's kind of taking a more pop approach. So like, she kind of went kind of okay. crazy. She yeah. kind of pop is my least favorite genre. So of course I'm not really gonna like the music. I'm not gonna right. say it's bad per se. Like it's a lot of the pop genres I don't like, which is why I didn't like a single one of the songs. But, your your preferred your preferred genre of choices is is the jazz, if I'm yeah. correct, right? I but think we talked about that. A also, bit ago. I guess the I guess I forgot to mention this, but more is more of a she's a she's a, she's a rapper. Oh, but a lot okay. Of, a lot of people hate that she calls herself a rapper because they only hear like the songs that the people. It's kind of like there's like, there's like two echo chambers. There's echo chambers of people being like all of her songs are amazing. We love her so much. Which I mean, it's not really that toxic in echo chamber, but there are some people being like, how dare you not like more music? And then there's yeah. a echo chamber of being like, oh my god, look at the song, it sucks. And then they think that her entire discography. I hope I pronounce that right. It's horrible. It's, but I'm yeah. like, and then I'm like the normal person where I'm like, I like some of her songs and I don't like the other one of her songs. Kind of like every single artist I listen to. Like, here's a composer that I really like. Yeah. There's this composer named Jeff Jarvis. I He's made some of my most favorite jazz songs that I've ever played. But he also made the song called Undercover Bossa. And I think that song is lame as hell and kind of boring. And he made the song called He's Blues, which is also really lame and boring. And I don't like playing it. And I really like his compositions, but I'm going to criticize the songs I don't like. So yeah. I'm more of an in between. And like, I, people are like, "Oh, Mari's just a bad rapper. Haha, <laughs> she she sucks." And I'm like, "Yeah, some of her songs aren't good, but like, they go so far as one day she made an April Fool's album where she auto tuned her voice to sound like a dude, and she made really stupid songs. Mainly, one of her songs was about." Uh, ordering a chicken sandwich and them getting the order wrong and she got mad about it or the the fake put her she used a, a male voice so it was more like the male version of Maury got mad at because uh, she made a, a whole fake character for this April Fool's joke and she made three oh. songs and the people who who or or the normal people are like oh my god this is a really funny joke uh, joke um, joke uh, EP I I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, I, I was like there's a little surprising amount of effort put into this. I think it was pretty funny. Yeah, I'm not going to actively mm-hmm. listen to the songs, but I think it's a good joke. And then there's yeah. the people who like really shit on her being like, oh my God, this is what she sounds like. She's so bad. Like, look at the shit she just put out today. Like, man, she really thinks she's funny or this is like literally how she sounds like. Like, this isn't even ironic. This is just how she sounds like. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, no. Because like, <laughs> like even, I get people who don't like her music because I'll admit it. I don't like every single one of her songs. Um, yeah, but but she, it's 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 the fact that they're attacking just to attack, just to attack, it's, and I'm just like that's kind yeah. of that's kind of disingenuous, and I'm not saying this because yeah. she's like I guess she's not she's not like here's the thing she's not like she's not even my like quote unquote favorite VTuber because like right. the thing about VTubers is like your favorite VTuber is your Oshi, and that's like um uh, and that's an idol term the your Oshi is the one like you like the most and that you want to support the yeah. most, but <laughs> me I don't have a favorite VTuber I just watch whoever i like to watch so like i like watching more yeah. i like watching pippa I like, like i don't like 
either one of them equally. I view these VTubers as content creators who also like to make music, which is what I want to do. Instead, you're of very like, active. You're very active in curating your own content mm -hmm. because overall, that is what media is for. Media yeah. is meant to be this huge collage of various videos, audio, oh, yeah. art, all that stuff. And you get to, you have the potential to see all of it, but you, the individual, get to choose what you do and do not like to see. And then you choose to see the stuff that you do like. And so you, yeah. you're just a lot more adamant about that. And also, you're a bit more hit and miss. Like, there's not really mm -hmm. an individual that overall aligns with your stuff. Yo, um, OBS fucked up our shit, so that's all we have. <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope everything that they threw out there, I hope all of you guys, you guys just fucked it. Yeah, fuck you. Um, we we tried. Uh, we'll probably not use OBS next time. We're both gonna figure out Audacity and then record proper. But other than that, uh, that's... I I think we got a good show. I think we had a good little good little talk. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, yeah. down in the description, uh, is probably the Discord link. Uh, we can cut this out if we don't. If we're not gonna, if if you don't want to do this, but uh, the links <laughs> to the, the links to some of the rabbit holes and tangents that we were referring to. Oh, you yeah. guys are curious I'll about those. Definitely put some shit down there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great day. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, see you next time. Whenever we record again, it might be a little bit for another video because we're all busy. But uh, once we get back together, it'll be pretty good. Do <laughs> do.